Hello and welcome to the webinar, Making Marketing Strategic. Today we will be sharing findings from research conducted this spring by Cornerstone Advisors on how bank marketing departments can increase their strategic influence within their organization. We will begin by going through uh, the material, and if you have a question along the way, please enter it in the question, mark, in the question box, and we will address as many of your questions as we can at the end of the presentation. Okay, so I'd like to introduce our presenters today. Um, we'll go ahead and um, go to that slide. Um, so Ron Shevlin is the Director of Research at Cornerstone Advisors, where he heads up the firm's strategic research efforts, and he led the research that we are presenting today. Ron is a frequent speaker at bank industry events and is the author of the Amazon best-selling book, Smarter Bank. He regularly shares his insights on the financial brands snarketing column and the FinTech Snark Tank pod podcast. His prior experience includes research and consulting for ITA Group, Forrester Research, and KPMG. Candy O'Connor is the COO of VIA, a marketing services and technology company where she oversees the company's business operations and is defining the overall corporate strategy. She has worked directly with clients for more than 20 years, and under her leadership, VIA has built relationships with numerous financial institutions, including Fifth Third Bank, West Bank Go, and Simmons Bank. And with that, I will turn things over to Ron Shevlin of Cornerstone Advisors to get us started. Great. Thank you very much, Martha, and thank you and to VIA for uh, pulling this together today. And we also want to thank everybody on the line uh, for taking some time out of there. Uh, busy day to um, listen to this. I'm sure we had to pull you away from the Mueller hearings. So uh, Candy and I are, are pretty honored that you would uh, pull yourselves away from that to, to hear what we had to say about making marketing strategic. Uh, I've been working with financial institutions, mid-sized banks and large banks and credit unions uh, for the better part of 20 years now and a lot with the marketing organizations. And one of the things that uh, I've noticed in working with a lot of financial institutions, marketing departments, is that some just seem to have more of a strategic impact and influence in their organizations than others. And so VIA and Cornerstone earlier this uh, year set out to really try to understand why. And I think the timing of this is really interesting because you know there is that uh, saying, I think it's a Chinese saying that says, may you live in interesting times. And I don't think anybody would argue that these are not interesting times to be in financial services. But I think we really need to kind of amend that saying a little bit. It's not just important or good to be living in interesting times. It's also good to have an interesting job or position in interesting times. And I would argue that it's a very interesting uh, time to be a chief marketing officer, especially in, in uh, financial services and banking in particular. Uh, you know, over the past number of years, we've seen a proliferation of technologies that enable new distribution channels, new marketing channels, new points of interaction for consumers, new consumer behaviors that are emerging. And, you know, it doesn't seem like any of the old points of channels or distribution opportunities or marketing channels ever seem to go away. So not only is uh, the, the marketing role becoming very complex, uh, but specifically for the, the chief marketing officer, I ran across a picture recently and I thought to myself, if there's anything that sort of captures the essence of today's chief marketing officer, uh, it's this. You know, everything loaded up on the chief marketing officer's plate deck or maybe their motorcycle if they've got one and somehow keeping it all together. And so in an attempt to really understand what the successful, and in this case, really think of it as strategic marketing organizations were doing. Uh, we conducted a survey a couple of months ago of uh, chief marketing officers and senior marketing officers, as, as well as other senior executives in mid-sized financial institutions. The uh, focus was really on that one to $20 billion level from an asset perspective. And most of the respondents were actually more in that three to, to, to 20 billion dollar range. And we really set out to understand 
um, who is really having a strategic impact on their organizations? And then from a practice, process, technology, organizational perspective, could we identify those things that help distinguish the high impact organizations from the others? And in an attempt to really understand who was having more of an impact, we started by uh, actually asking about some of the, the top challenges. We want to get a sense for what was challenging. I actually borrowed this from uh, the digital banking report and found that you know uh, the, the list of challenges facing marketing today just seems to keep piling up. Um, interestingly, at the top of the list was data and data infrastructure issues, followed by marketing automation uh, and, and measuring performance. Data analytics, resources, and manpower to, uh, round out the, the, the top of the, the five biggest challenges. Um, and yet, with, even with these challenges, many and many marketing organizations are having strategic success, but it's not necessarily across the board. Um, so we really went out to, to understand which financial marketers were worthy of C-suite status, and started by asking. Uh, how well does marketing do a number of, of key activities or functions within marketing? Uh, we asked the respondents to actually rate themselves on a scale of one to 10 on how well they were doing across these six areas of marketing. They gave themselves the best scores for campaign targeting. The average on a scale of one to 10 was a little over seven, uh, followed by revenue generation and customer engagement. Uh, and then the scores start to taper off a little bit with performance measurement. And I think it's important to note that the two areas that marketing and uh, the executive team gave marketing the lowest scores for were in the uh, front part of the marketing funnel, lead generation and, and lead nurturing. But based on these responses, we then uh, kind of gave everybody a score, an overall score based on uh, how well they did on these six measures and categorized them into three different segments, uh, high impact, moderate impact, and low impact marketing departments. Uh, the high impact uh, marketing departments had an average score of eight, a little over eight and a half. The moderate impact came in at about six and a half the low impact scored right at about four. Interestingly, all three categories scored highest on campaign targeting. Um, the high impact organizations, uh, their next highest score was for revenue generation and lead generation. For both the moderate impact and low impact institutions, customer engagement was the second highest ranking. So based on this categorization, we started to then look at uh, what are the practices, the processes, the organizational structures, the internal workings and the technology utilization of these organizations to understand and try to distinguish if there were differences uh, between these, these, these three different groups. And what we discovered were that there were really five habits or uh, traits of high impact or strategic marketing influencers or marketing departments. Um, number one, how they allocated their time. Number two, the internal relationships or the quality of internal relationships they had. Number three, their use of technology. Number four, data and analytics. And number five, how they did strategic planning. So what I'd like to do is take you through some of the research and give you some perspective on how the high impact groups differed from the other organizations along these five habits. We actually set out and asked the respondents um, how marketing spent their time, and more specifically, um, did they spend the right amount of time on various activities? Did they spend too much time on these activities or not enough time on these activities? We asked about 15 different activities, and for about eight of them, roughly two thirds or more said that they were spending the right amount of time on things like budgeting, marketing department staff meetings, direct mail campaign and, and execution compliance management, all the way down to project meetings and, and digital channel uh, campaign planning and execution. But towards the bottom of the list, you can see that less than half, and in fact, in some cases, uh, not even a third or a fifth of respondents said that they were did not spend the right amount of time 
on things like data collection and, and implementation, analytics and analysis, and very importantly, marketing strategy and corporate strategy development and planning. Now, one thing I will say uh, uh, about what we found in the survey is that when we compare that, because we also asked them, you know, three years ago, um, how did you spend your time and did you spend the right amount of time? There's clearly been a lot of improvement over the past three years in areas like direct mail campaign, campaign planning and execution, departmental staff meetings and budgeting in terms of how they're spending their uh, time, corporate marketing development and execution as well. A lot more say that they're spending the right amount of time today on these activities uh, than they did three years ago. But perhaps somewhat distressing if you look towards the bottom of the list, not nearly the levels of improvement for things like analytics analysis and data collection and implementation. And we'll actually get into some more of the specifics about why that's a, uh, a strategic trait or a habit of the, uh, the high impact organizations. Um, but I think it's important, and I wanna highlight three areas here, how the high impact institutions differed from the, the other two groups. In three areas, we found that uh, the high impact organizations were a whole lot more likely to say that they spent the right amount of time and activity. And one of them, interestingly, was social media development and execution. And I think one of the things that I took away from this, and you can certainly uh, dispute this if you, you'd like, I'm certainly open to hear arguments on this. My take was that this was really reflective of the marketing departments that had started to really understand how to use digital channels uh, and specifically social media more um, in, in a way to better engage both the customer and prospect base. So two thirds of the high impact institutions said that they were spending the right amount of time on social media development and execution versus a little less than half of the moderate impact institutions and a little more than a third of the low impact institutions. But even bigger differences were found in the, these other two uh, activities. Um, and this, I think, kind of almost is self-explanatory. So why would a high strategic or high impact institution be different from the others? Well, clearly, they're spending the right amount of time on things like corporate strategy development and planning and marketing strategy development and planning. Uh, perhaps interesting to note is that only really a, a little more than a half of even the high impact institutions said that they were spending the right amount of time on marketing strategy um, versus some of the others. But you can see a really big difference uh, in terms of corporate strategy uh, activity between the high impact institutions and in particular the moderate in impact institutions uh, as well as the uh, third, third category of the low impact institutions. So to be strategic means developing, focusing on, on strategy. It just doesn't, it just doesn't come about by itself. We did find though that there were two areas where marketing said that they spent too much time. Uh, one being on compliance management, the other being on project meetings. And I kind of anticipated going into this. I actually thought we'd hear a lot more complaints about compliance management that, than we did. But this clearly points to an opportunity uh, to make better use of technology in compliance efforts uh, to get this down from spending too much time to spending the right amount of time. That said, I, I was a little surprised when marketing said that they were spending too much time on project meetings. Now we distinguished between internal staff meetings and project meetings, which we anticipated and defined as client, internal client related meetings. Uh, so it seems a little odd to me that there'd be marketers saying that they spend too much time with their internal clients. Uh, but this did come up as an area that even across the board, regardless of the category, of uh, whether it was high impact, moderate impact, or low impact institution, that um, this top popped up as, as an area that they said we're more likely to say that they spent too much time on than, than some of the others. So my suggestion to, to a lot of you is, you know, you're not necessarily going to ask your people to, to count every hour they spend across these 15 activities. But I think it'd be interesting and probably helpful for many of, of your organizations to um, 
do an internal survey of your marketing department. If you'd like, we can help you out since I've already defined those 15 activities. Uh, contact via uh, contact myself and we can help you set up a, a, a mechanism to kind of survey your your own people and ask them the same thing that I asked uh, the survey respondents you know uh, where are you spending the right amount of time where are you not spending enough time where are you spending too much time I think it'd be very interesting for your own uh, analysis to see how it kind of falls out uh, where there's agreement uh, on those uh, assessments uh, where there's lack of assessment uh, or agreement among those uh, perspectives. And also, interestingly, you know, how as maybe you as the chief marketing officer or senior marketing executive in your organization, uh, how your own perspective of how marketing spends their time uh, differs from, from the rest of your, your department. So if you'd like some help with that, let Vaya or myself know. We can figure out a way to help you, help you do that. That's the, um, the first strategic habit uh, of the high impact marketers. The second is around the internal relationships that marketing has. We actually asked marketing, uh, the survey respondents, about the quality of their internal relationships uh, across the board in terms of uh, various departments and organizations and product areas with, within the uh, institution. Um, for the most part, you know, we found particularly strong relationships uh, with retail banking and commercial lending and, and the mortgage areas. So not really surprising that, you know, marketing would have relatively strong relationships uh, with the product areas. But across the board, we did find that there was less of a perspective of having strong relationships, generally more like acceptable levels of relationship, and in some cases, tenure less or weak, in some of the support areas like IT, um, HR and, and accounting and finance. And as we dug into the data, well, one of the things that really kind of popped out to us was that the high impact institutions have stronger relationships with the support areas like IT, finance and HR than institutions in the lower impact segments. And so what this kind of told us is that, you know, for the most part, many marketing organizations and financial institutions are doing a pretty good job of, of serving their internal customers, you know, the product areas, the lines of business, but they're not doing as good a job as the strategic influencers are in building those relationships with other support areas like IT finance and, and HR. One of the executives that we talked to for, uh, for this report, we just didn't do a survey, we actually did a series of interviews as well. One of the quotes I think that was very uh, informative was from John Hanley, the SVP of marketing at Equity Bank, who said that to develop a relationship with IT, marketers must understand how vendor relationships work and how to negotiate. And we heard similar things in terms of how to improve the relationship with other support areas like HR and finance about really uh, you know, speaking their language, putting, being able to put yourself in their shoes. Uh, and I think the strategic uh, marketing organizations, whether consciously or not consciously, uh, are just simply able to do that better than, than some of other institutions who are struggling to kind of raise their strategic influence and, and impact uh, in their organizations. So overall, building that uh, those internal relationships, not just with the product areas, but with the support areas seems to be a, a very key differentiator uh, between the, the high impact strategic organizations and the rest of the pack. Uh, the third habit was uh, technology. And, and to discuss this section, I'm actually gonna turn things over to Candy and let, let her take us through that section. Can you need me to, to click through or you got the uh, controls? There we go, excellent. I'm not hearing you, Candy. I don't know if anybody else can. Oh, sorry. You? Thank you, Ron. Yeah. I was on mute, I apologize. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna talk about the habit number three, technology. So in this research, a third of the financial institutions in the high impact group said that digital marketing is their primary approach, and another half said it's a significant part of their overall effort. Digital marketing has many facets, but we're gonna to focus today on the systems used to deploy the digital marketing, the marketing technology. 
So in the information here, you can see in the results where the high impact groups make effective use of marketing technologies. They have deployed, as you can see, this is particularly true for email marketing systems and social media. Also, the content management stuff, those are all above the 50% line, but you can see some in there where the moderate and low impact were also had um, effective use of those technologies. So it starts to become a little more inconsistent on where they're having the impact. But what was interesting in this data is the CRM systems having a lower number. However, one of the high impact CMOs stated that CRM is really a tool that better supports the salespeople not marketing. The biggest impact on our work comes from our marketing resource management systems. So one thing that I've observed with these marketing technologies is oftentimes as many silos are created and how the line of business use each one. There sometimes is not an overall strategy on how the financial institution will use the technologies. I'm not saying that all lines of business will have the same strategy, but I think the challenge becomes when you're talking about marketing technologies, a lot of times they all do a lot of the same similar things. So you have different systems with data in them and that directly impacts the data and analytics because they're all in these different systems and Ron will go over that a little bit more under the next habit. So as you can see where the high impact groups were using the technologies that we just talked about effectively, you can see the results directly in the campaign targeting and the revenue generation and lead generation. So this makes sense in that they are seeing the impacts within the campaigns and those items that are really specific to marketing as we see them. However, you can see in some of the areas where they are not having as much of an impact are more operational, like performance management, sales enablement, compliance management. I think we can see that there are efficiencies to be gained through marketing technologies in those areas. Now, it's possible they've implemented those technologies with marketing resource management or one of the other ones but they're not being used effectively. So, um, you know, the problem that we all have is based on our experience that lack of tech impact does not necessarily mean that technology has not been deployed. Um, we've all seen many situations where institutions have deployed technology, but it's too complex to manage, too complex to support, and too complex to use and use to make an impact. So, of course, this goes back to making sure that the partners we pick in these areas are a good match for our needs, um, we also believe the best partners are those that provide the services to help us manage the software. Um, it's one of the first questions I know we ask when deploying technology is what their involvement is going to be in making us successful. So setting yourself up to use technology effectively begins upfront as, as vendors are evaluated. In our experience, when evaluating partners, there are several key factors to consider to ensure the effective and consistent usage of the system. You know, any technology can be difficult to implement, but I think three of those top factors that should be considered is making sure that the vendors on the marketing technology, they not only have the bank industry experience, they have best practices and success stories that they're able to show you. Um, they provide system management. That's not just the implementation, but it's the ongoing support of the system. And then of course, of course, end user support ongoing to make sure they're continuing to work with you to make that successful. So one example I wanted to go through today is a financial institution that we've worked with for multiples of years, um, implemented a marketing re our, our marketing resource management solution and kind of talk about how they were able to um, make an impact within the company. So just a level set on mar what marketing resource management systems are. They are platforms to, ha platform to house your marketing assets and manage multiple workflows these assets have been made available to the appropriate groups that need access to those assets. Marketing resource management systems are truly an extension of your marketing operations. And of course, different systems have different functionality. But in this case that I'm going to go over um, the specific solutions they used with ours were asset management, compliance management, request management, campaign execution, and budget management. Um, this financial institution, like I said, we've worked with for multiple years and we were just given the opportunity to gain some insight on the results we were able to achieve. Um, previously, Ron covered the importance of effective time allocation. This client was able to achieve significant time-saving benefits by reducing their administrative marketing tasks by 75% by automating workflows and utilizing the budget management. Also, again, going back to Ron's description of the importance of building internal or building the relationships with internal support functions, 
Um, this bank found that the system had positive impacts across many departments within the bank, improving those relationships, so it was a big win. Um, just some examples of that is they were able to decrease the number of invoices sent to accounts table through um, automated request workflows and budget management. They were able to reduce the burden on compliance, uh, minimize the risk by having approved materials and extended approval workflows. Uh, there were recruiting benefits by providing easy access to materials and automated campaigns. And then, of course, IT always likes when they're not hosting the software, so that was a positive, and then less storage on their side. And then there was also an on-demand component where we were able to reduce the waste and less warehousing for procurement. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Ron to cover habit number four, data and analytics. Great, thank you very much. Um, and make sure you give me the control back so I can do that. Before I do though, you know, a couple of things, Candy, would love to just uh, comment on that uh, you, you talked a little bit about. You know, it's it was a surprise to me. Maybe this was just sort of my own uh, sort of limited understanding of CRM. But you know, the fact that so many of uh, of our of our uh, survey respondents commented about how CRM was more of a tool for the salespeople than for marketing. And I don't know that that's necessarily um, well understood by the, the senior management teams in many banks. I talk to them a lot. They all seem to want to kind of position CRM as the end all be all to marketing's you know, technology challenges. And I don't know, don't know that that view is um, necessarily uh, you know, all that widespread or, 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 you know, understood that well by the senior management teams. The uh, the second point that I wanted to pick up from what you were talking about was, you know, if you recall, if folks will recall when we presented the, uh, the overall assessment of how well marketing was doing, lead generation and lead nurturing were, were at the bottom of the, of the list in terms of uh, how well marketing was performing. When we asked about the technology impact, I don't know if people picked up on this, but not one of the low impact institutions said that technology was having a strong impact on either lead generation or, or lead nurturing. So, you know, it really kind of points to some really big opportunities uh, among a lot of institutions um, in terms of making better use of, of technology in, in, in some of these activities. Uh, so I uh, just wanted to kind of reinforce some of those points. Uh, moving along to the last two uh, habits of high impact marketing, um, the first is we noticed some big differences in, in data and analytics. Um, I have to click on the screen to get us going here. Are you, did you guys make me the presenter? I don't see that uh, up in the um, top there that I've got control. So if you can do that or if it's easier to just move the slide forward either way. Did it give it back to you? Oh, now I got it. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, first, I want to emphasize the fact that even the high impact institutions, those that we categorize as having a high strategic impact, um, a relatively small percentage of them, that's the 13% in that third column there, said that they already have advanced analytical capabilities in, <laughs> embedded in their operational and decision making processes. Um, clearly a higher percentage than in the other two categories. Uh, but this is not like the, you know, we're in a situation where even these high impact institutions have the answers and everything in place already from a, um, a data and analytics perspective. And really, I found this somewhat surprising that not a lot more of the high impact institutions said that they have common data views across functions and processes and data delivery. Uh, and timely data delivery. But where you can see some differences in terms of those who have conflicting functional views, <coughs> excuse me, and um, getting uh, timely reports, only one out of five of the high impact institutions complain that they get conflicting views and, and untimely data versus about uh, four out of 10 of the low impact institutions and about a third of the moderate institutions. So there's still a long way to go for even the the high impact institutions to up their game on, on data analytics. But when we dug in and asked specifically about what data and tools the uh, various respondents were, were using, uh, there were some differences, and I think significant differences between the three groups, and specifically in their use of bill pay data. 
So a lot of marketing organizations using uh, demographic data for sure and using uh, supplemental data uh, that tends to be more demographic focused uh, or perhaps income focused, but what really distinguished the high impact institutions in terms of the data being used um, was number one, using internal bill pay data. Now, that is going to be a huge challenge for a lot of you um, as you've probably seen your bank uh, or credit union bill pay functions being utilized less and less over the, over the past few years. Um, as millennials have really come into the market and dominated the uh, digital banking space, um, they've not been as heavy adopters of bank or financial institution bill pay as, as older generations have. So the uh, high impact institutions aren't just using bill pay data, they're making sure that they've got a good set of data to, to, to use uh, for their analytics efforts. Uh, from a analytics perspective more, more narrowly, uh, the high impact institutions much more likely to rely on uh, or have in place propensity to buy models, regardless of what data they are using. Uh, and then uh, as a check and quality control on, on their analytics efforts, the high impact institutions much more likely than the others to be doing things like A, A B testing. Uh, you can see, you'll see in the report when you get it, if you don't already have, um, there was a whole list of tools and, and data sources that we asked about. These were the three that really distinguished the uh, high impact institutions from the, uh, the rest of the pack. And the last high impact uh, habit um, might be, again be somewhat uh, self-referential here and self-defining, but it was the high impact organization's um, deployment and uh, pre prevalence of doing strategic planning. Um, nearly eight out of 10 of the high impact institutions have a formal written marketing plan in contrast to a little more than half of the, the, the other two groups. Uh, and clearly there's a lot of differences we saw earlier in terms of time allocation, in terms of how much time they're spending on both marketing and, um, and corporate planning. But I was actually kind of surprised that this number, uh, two things that surprised me. First of all, I would have thought the high impact, 100% of the high impact institutions had a formal written marketing plan. And I would have thought that a whole lot more of everyone else would have had a formal written marketing plan. You know, obviously, I, I'm sure many of you are, are have experience with marketing plans that just, kind of sit on the shelf. And while nobody wants a marketing plan that sits on the shelf, you know, what this kind of told me is that just the, the process of going through this generates some alignment and specificity about what the organization is going to do, which is what, you know what, maybe the marketing plans of the high impact groups sit on the shelf just as much as the others. But the fact that they've gone through this process, I think helps them build some alignment, both internal within marketing uh, as well as with um, the, the rest of the organization. Uh, and then finally, the, uh, so that was the, 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 actually that's not finally, those were the five areas, uh, the five habits of the, the, the high impact organizations. There's something else I wanted to talk about though to kind of wrap this up and it didn't quite make the list of the five habits. But one of the things that we suspected going into this study was that there's, there is some qualitative aspect of why uh, some departments, some marketing organizations are more strategic than others that have nothing to do with their practices, their processes, their organizational structure, the technology they use. We suspected that it had a lot more to do with two factors. Number one, how does the CEO in, an org in the organization view marketing? Does he or she view marketing as a strategic contributor or a non-strategic contributor? Uh, I have seen a lot of CEOs uh, in both banks and credit unions who really think of marketing as just being, you know, the, the tchotchke people who go to the mall on Saturdays, you know, to hand out, you know, branded cups and pencils, um, or just see marketing as, you know, get people into the branches for us. That's your job, get, you know, lead, uh, you know, build, generate leads. And don't really see marketing either uh, as, a, as a strategic contributor or influencer to the organization. But there's another factor here as well that's, that's kind of hard to quantify, which is 
how good is the marketing organization? They might be very good from a tactical perspective in terms of execution on all these things that they do and uh, you know, driving that motorcycle with the million things on the, pa on the back of it. That does not necessarily mean that they're, they're strategic. And so it strikes us that while it's hard to quantify this, you know, there are really four situations that emerge where marketing is tactical and the CEO does not view marketing as particularly strategic. And I say tactical is, is in contrast to being strategic. And if that's your organization, uh, then quite honestly, you've got a lot of challenges. Changing the mind of the CEO around being strategic you've got to build a whole lot of capabilities internally to be able to demonstrate that and then struggle with the fact that the CEO may not even be inclined to do that. So finding the support among other senior executives who may see their way to viewing uh, marketing as more strategic, but building out those capabilities are very important. Now where marketing is you know, more tactical versus strategic, but CEO views marketing as a potential strategic contributor, uh, you know, I might say that this is actually a worse situation to be in than number one, because then you're not meeting expectations and you've got a lot of work to do. And I would guess that in many uh, marketing departments where this is the situation, uh, the CMO's role might be in jeopardy in that kind of organization. Um, we continue up around, I should have renumbered this, but we go to number four. I mean, clearly that's a great place to be. Um, where the CEO sees marketing as strategic and marketing's living up to expectations. But I think I run into a lot of organizations uh, that are in number three, where the CEO does not view marketing as strategic, but marketing is actually pretty strong. The CMO is strong from a strategic perspective. Um, and this is where, you know, we're, we're building on the five habits that we've listed here today. Uh, become very important to understand, you know, where are your strengths and weaknesses along those five habits and where are the, the places to, to make improvements, uh, you know, to really help the CEO start to develop a different kind of view of uh, how, how marketing can be more of a, a strategic contributor. Uh, so five habits of high impact marketing, time allocation, internal relationships, technology, data analytics, and strategic planning. Um, there's a lot more in the report itself, um, which you either have sent to you or will be able to access after this. Um, and with that, um, uh, Martha, I'd like to ask you to, to kind of facilitate the, uh, the Q&A here. Okay, sure. Um, so one question that has come in is, I guess, some clarification around, the, you know, why is it important to have relationships with the support functions and are there any specific functions that are more important than others or if you were looking to start where would where would you start can you want to start with that one i'll jump in too after after you but if you want to start with that one yes um just to, before we start there i just wanted to also point out that people can enter the questions into the actual um webex app so yeah, so um, so the question is, why is it important to have relationships with the support functions, especially if you've already got the relationships with the with the your, your more client um, uh, functions? Well, I think it really starts with kind of everybody being on the same page. I think one of the biggest issues we see is like all of a sudden you're you're running down paths with a project, and compliance then has to step in, and they're unaware of the the things that have been done before, and you're basically sometimes you have to you know, the, pro the project becomes obsolete because it can't be approved or um, they don't have that, they don't have, they don't share your vision as to what you're trying to accomplish. That includes IT, of course, too. So I think that's why improving those relationships, making yourself more integrated, I think breaks down those barriers um, within the organization. Yeah, the things I would add to that, I think you're spot on, Candy. A couple of things I'd add to that. First, you know, I think it's important for marketing to recognize that areas like HR and IT and, and finance are, see marketing's clients as their clients as well. They serve them internally. Uh, I think marketing treats 
the other product areas uh, and lines of business more as a client than those other support areas do. But increasingly, those other support areas see that as well. And so working hand in hand to serve your, your, your common customer base, client base, is important. Uh, another reason why is that, you know, one of the things I had mentioned right at the very start was that uh, almost across the board, uh, our survey respondents did not necessarily see marketing's uh, measurement and performance measurement capabilities as particularly strong. Uh, and this is where finance can really come in and, and, and help as, as a partner. So when the relationship with market, with finance is strong, then there's more of an opportunity for marketing to improve its capabilities around uh, performance measurement and management and measurement attribution, uh, because they can be very uh, common, uh, very critical to that. Um, and I hope I wouldn't have to convince anybody that the relationship with IT becomes very important. You know, my, IT's in a, in a tough space these days because obviously the product lines and lines of business are their, are their customer base. Um, but to a large extent and increasingly, marketing is a, uh, with the, the, the uh, proliferation of marketing technologies, uh, is becoming an internal client to them as well. And when that relationship isn't strong, uh, and in many cases I see that it isn't, you know, marketing just kind of wants to go off and say, well, market, IT is not helping with, you know, implementing marketing, marketing technologies. We're going to go do it all ourselves. And that might have some expedience and some, some benefits from a speed perspective. But from an integration and support perspective, that may not be the best long-term strategy. And a poor relationship with IT is not going to help uh, fix that, amend it, or improve that in any way. So... You know, I'm not sure I could tell anybody like where to start because I think it's very dependent on your own institution and organization. But I think the most important areas are clearly IT and in finance, not to belittle HR at all. But I think the the operational impact is going to be a lot more uh, uh, impactful by having those strong relationships with both finance and, and IT. Okay, thank you, Ron. Um, Another question, of the five habits that you've outlined, um, are they in rank order? Are there some that are more important than others? Uh, my perspective, and I'd love to hear yours, Candy, is that that's not in any particular order. Um, part of the, you know, part of the reason for doing that was just sort of laying out kind of the, the storyline. I did want to talk a little bit about the time allocation before the relationship, because I thought there was a lead-in uh, in terms of the uh, project, uh, the amount of time they were spending on project meetings project that meeting. related to the um, uh, relationships. But you know, I would not have characterized or prioritized these at all. Uh, I think it's just very important for each institution to kind of look at its own situation, assess where they are, and figure out where their own individual strengths and weaknesses are. Candy, would you see it yeah. differently? No, I absolutely agree. I mean, I think they build on each other and they're very intertwined um, in how they work. Obviously, with technology and data analytics, they go hand in hand. And um, to your point with time allocation and the internal relationships and the time you spent there and kind of what I touched on, how technology does improve internal relationships. Um, so I don't think you can prioritize any of them um, in the big picture. Yeah. Okay, well, that's all the questions that, that we have received. Um, so we'll go ahead to the, to the last slide and close things out here. Um, we really appreciate everybody um, that took the time to, to join us here today. Um, we want to uh, thank our presenters, Ron Shevlin of Cornerstone Advisors and Candy O'Connor of VIA. Um, all who attended will be receiving a copy of Cornerstone's report, Making Marketing Strategic, and we'll be getting that out to you by email. And we really hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you.